This video is going to review cross-sectional volume, which is not in our textbook. So this was the supplemental section that we went through in class where you don't, we didn't have problems from the book, we had a worksheet instead. When you're looking at cross-sectional volume, first thing you need to do is you need to have a sketch of what the base of the solid looks like. So if you look at the first one, it's talking about a solid that's in the first quadrant bounded by the x and y axis and the line x plus 3y equals 9. Now some problems will actually draw the picture for you. I actually took this from a book that had the picture provided. If you don't have a picture provided, you should still know what this looks like. This is a line, uh, if you do kind of like a cover-up method and cover up the 3y, that tells you that the x-intercept is 9, so we're going to go out here to 9 and put a point, and then the y-intercept, if you let x equal 0, is 3. So we're going to put our points, and what you have is a triangle. So that is the base of the solid. Now what we want to know is how are we slicing this solid. You want to think of cross-sectional as almost like slicing a loaf of bread. We're going to slice these solids, and the shape that we're slicing it into in this problem is we're slicing it into isosceles right triangles. So these were the formulas that you need to remember. With an isosceles right triangle, the formula is you need to integrate the height squared divided by 4. So first we have to figure out how we're going to represent the height. So if you look at this problem, we are drawing our, our isosceles right triangles perpendicular to the x-axis. So I'm going to just use a different color so you can see the side of it. So here is the side of one of our isosceles right triangles. Very easy to represent that height. That height is nothing more than just the function. Now, I do need to make sure it's in terms of x's. I need to work with the correct variable. So if you look at your original equation, if I want to get y by itself, I'm going to subtract x from both sides. So I get 3y equals 9 minus x. And then I'm going to divide everything by 3. So the way that I'm going to represent this height is it is 9 divided by 3 is 3 minus x over 3. That is the height of each of these isosceles triangles. When I set up my integration, the other thing I need to figure out is where is my slicing happening, from what x value to what x value. So my largest isosceles triangle starts there. My smallest one is all the way down here. So my integral goes from 0 to 9. That's where my slicing occurs. So 0 to 9 is my boundary. My height we've already identified, so I have to remember to square it. So it's going to be 3 minus x over 3 squared over 4. Some things to make this easier, if you are asked for a final answer and not just a setup, the 4 that's in the bottom can definitely be pulled out front, so you may see a problem like this where it's written as 1 fourth. The integral from 0 to 9 of 3 minus x over 3 squared. If you are asked to do this by hand, you would have to square it out and then integrate separately. A lot of times this is in a calculator section. I found this problem in a calculator section, so at this point you would go to your calculator, use the FNINT, and get your numeric answer. I want to show you how we can kind of make it more difficult, which is the last piece, and this is actually the way the problem was presented in the book that I found. If you want to make it more difficult, we're going to change the way that we draw our triangles. So now instead of my triangles laying perpendicular to the x-axis, we're going to go perpendicular to the y-axis. So let me put my picture back up here. So we still have my triangle, and I've already established where it crosses the x and y-axis. But now when I draw my isosceles triangles, they're going to be drawn like this. What changes is my variable, first of all, I can't be in terms of x's, I need to be in terms of y's, and also my boundaries, because now when I'm slicing it, if you think of slicing it like this, I'm slicing it from a low y, which is down here at 0, to an upper y up here at 3. So that's the first thing I'm going to write, is that my boundaries are now 0 to 3, as opposed to 0 to 9, because of the way I'm slicing it. I also have to represent the height, because the formula doesn't change. Isosceles right triangles are always going to use the same formula when it comes to integration, but I need to write the height differently. So now my height, if I go back to my original equation, x plus 3y equals 9, I need to have it solved for x. And actually, this is a little easier. x is just 9 minus 3y. So when I set up my integral, when I take my height and square it, I'm going to have 9 minus 3y squared divided by 4. And again, it is a lot easier to just pull the 4 out front. I actually did this one on my calculator to check my work, and I did the integral, and then I just divided my final answer by 4. You would not have to square it out. This problem did come from a calculator allowed section of a practice AP test. So you are just getting the decimal equivalent of that and not doing all the algebra by hand. So it kind of shows you two different versions. Most of our problems are presented where they're perpendicular to the x-axis, but if it is perpendicular to the y-axis, it's nothing more than a variable switch. Get your equations in y's, get your boundaries in y's. 
One of the ones we talked about in class, a very common one, is when the base of your region is circular. So we have one that is a circle x squared plus y squared equals 16. You should know what that circle looks like. You should understand that that circle is centered at 0, 0, and has a radius of 4. So here is my circle, again, going out 4 in each direction. So just kind of show it along the x-axis. We have to know how we're, how we're slicing it. This time we are slicing perpendicular to the x-axis, so we're going to stick with x variables. And we're slicing it in into equilateral triangles. So you picture that you're slicing loaf of, loaves of bread, but as you're slicing them, each one is an equilateral triangle. It's kind of like coming out of the page at you. The formula for equilateral triangle for its area is side squared times the square root of 3 over 4. The square root of 3 over 4 is just the coefficient. It can be brought out front. A couple ways to do this problem, and it really depends on if you're allowed to use your calculator or not, how much you want to do. First, let's represent, let's draw a picture of where the triangle would look like if we're laying it on my circle. So here's an example of one side of an equilateral triangle that has sliced this circle. If I represent that length, again, we want to work with y's in, uh, in terms of x's, so solve for y. We have y equals the square root of 16 minus x squared. However, that is just from here to here. We have that same length from here to here. So if I actually want to represent how long that side is, that side is 2 times the square root of 16 minus x squared. And that's because it is above and below the axis. Sometimes problems will only be above, and you will only have that single length. But when it is on both sides, you have that symmetry, it is twice the amount that whatever it is to get from the axis up to the function. So that's my side. The other thing that I can do is I can look at this problem with the symmetry and say, well, I know that if I go from 0 to 4 with my slicing, it's going to be the same as if I go from negative 4 to 0. So one shortcut that you kind of use is you can double your answer and make your boundaries. When you think of your slicing, if we're slicing it like this, only going from 0 to 4, and then squaring my side. Now here you do have to put this 2 inside my parentheses and square it. And then finally, I have this coefficient, the radical 3 over 4. Rather than put it inside my integral, I'm going to put it out front, because it is also a coefficient. If the problem only asks you to set it up, this is done. If the problem asks you to integrate it, if you have to do it by hand, this can take a lot of algebra. It's pretty tedious, because you would have to square it out. But taking that shortcut of only going from 0 to 4 and doubling it will save you a lot of, a lot of time with boundaries. If you're allowed to use your calculator, which you will be on your test and quiz, then you definitely just, at this point, want to plug it in your calculator and get your numeric answer. And don't forget about the coefficients in front. At that point, you have your answer for your cross-sectional volume. Something to think about with cross-sectional volume, you will not have pi show up every time. Uh, we still have pi if we're dealing with splitting things up into semicircles, but when you're work dealing with splitting things up into triangles or both isosceles and equilateral or squares, there is no pi, whereas you had it for every single volume problem that was a revolution volume.